Hi, my name is Sean Mars, and I'm an applications engineer with Hawk Ridge Systems. And today I want to talk about prepping a model for your simulation. And particularly, I want to talk about prepping a 3D scanned and auto-surfaced model or a mesh model, so something that might have been exported into a mesh format and then imported in as a solid body in SolidWorks. Both of these conditions will give you many faces where you usually want to set up your boundary conditions. With an auto surface, it'll be rectangular like this. With mesh files, they would be triangular. And, and either way, we're going to have difficulty selecting that inner bore on this impeller. So you might have options such as select tangency that could help you um, or saving selection sets. But oftentimes, it's either going to select tangency is either going to select way too many faces possibly way too few faces, and saving selections is going to be tedious as you'll have to go and select every face that you want to have in that selection set. And this is just a representative sample. It's not even as many as I'd want. I'd probably want that entire bore. So that's not going to be very useful. So in cases like this, I oftentimes like to just quickly uh, extrude over and then recut the faces that I need, assuming that they're fairly simple like this. So cylindrical faces like a hole, flat faces like the top and bottom of this impeller might be good candidates. So it's a pretty simple approach. You need a, an appropriate reference plane like this. Uh, I like to use the perimeter circle. If I'm not 100% sure on what the diameter of these bores are supposed to be, I can just kind of select a couple of vertices on my mesh or auto surfaced faces. And then that's going to be for the cut. So I'm going to make a separate sketch. And this one is going to be just a normal circle. And I'm going to make it bigger than it needs to be because this one's actually going to extrude over this hole in both directions. Um, up to vertex might also be a good choice for you if, if through all is not working. And then I'll take that first circle and extrude a cut. So now I have one single face that I can use for selecting that inner bore. The next step would be to start testing the mesh. So you could have done this right off the bat as well. But remember, you can always just start a generic static study and just run the mesh at this point. So I'm going to try to create a pretty, I'm going to try to create a fairly coarse mesh, something that we might use for the initial setup or for quick studies, or maybe something like a design study that's going to run many, many times. If I look at my details, you can see I have about 55,000 elements for this one part, which might be fairly reasonable, depending on what I'm going to do with it next. But we can also see that I have some high aspect ratio elements. So if I wanted to, I could inspect where those are with something like a mesh quality diagnostics plot. So let's say I want to look at aspect ratio, and I want to look at elements that are above 50, and see if they're going to be in areas that might be high stress. So this will go ahead and show me all the elements that have a higher aspect ratio. And you can see that they're all pretty much grouped at the top and bottom, right around where those extrudes and cuts were. So if I take a look at this just on the SOLIDWORKS side, and particularly in this case, if I were to turn up my image quality, which I wouldn't suggest saving the file at a really high image quality, but sometimes it can help us interpret what's going on here. If I take a look at this, then I can see there's something kind of strange happening around that extrusion. So on the SOLIDWORKS side, the geometry analysis tool can help us to pinpoint these areas as well. So if it wasn't able to mesh and it was just failing, then this tool might help us to diagnose why the mesh was failing with those mesh settings. Once again, I had things set fairly coarsely and when simulation creates its mesh, it has to use the SOLIDWORKS faces as boundaries for that mesh. So if you have really, really small faces or sliver faces or anything like this, these could lead to problems with meshing because you're going to have to have little tiny mesh elements that kind of squeeze into those areas. And you can see here that I actually have this kind of lip where the extrusion is sticking out the top of my impeller. And that's because this auto surface top face isn't perfectly flat. 
So it was able to mesh, but if I wanted to clean this up further, I could go ahead and maybe take a slice off the top and bottom of this impeller. So a quick way to do that would be to use reference planes and the cut with surface tool. So I'm just going to project a plane parallel to the top plane going through one of these vertices along the top. And then from that plane, I'm going to create a second plane and just offset it down a bit. So you could also use your sketches and cuts or however you want to do this. But I'm going to try to take off a small enough area or a small enough thickness that it's not going to appreciably change the model. But it will allow me to flatten that face really nicely. If I need to put other boundary uh, conditions on here, that'll make it a lot easier. I can repeat the same process for the bottom. And then now I should be able to work with this um, a lot easier and have it interface with other components or have other boundary conditions created for it. All right, so that's everything I have for you here in this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching and check out the rest of our YouTube channel for uh, great videos on a variety of SOLIDWORKS topics.